On a November 2019 episode of AEW Dynamite, Cody Rhodes would cut a promo that would be widely lauded by critics and fans alike. And in this very promo, he delivered a line that has stuck with me to this very day. In regards to AEW, he would say this, and I quote, This is the Alice Island of professional wrestling. This is freedom. And I'll never forget it, when he delivered this line, the crowd in attendance erupted. Then the camera cut to a fan in attendance holding a sign that said AEW, where wrestling matters. And the reason why this moment has stuck with me, I think, is because we as fans believed it. We believed what Cody Rhodes said that day. Since day one, AEW prided itself in being the promotion that gave opportunities to those that felt underutilized or overlooked. It gave people the platform to become or prove that they elite. And I think this very philosophy perfectly encapsulates the career trajectory of AEW wrestler Ty Conti. The story of Ty Conti's career so far has been one of wrestling's great success stories made possible by AEW. But AEW just provided the platform. This was also made possible because Conti decided to bet on herself. And by putting in the work, she went from undesirable to ungoddamn deniable. To quote Cody Rhodes on that very same promo I mentioned earlier. This is Tranquilo Club and this is the future stars of AEW, Ty Conti. In October 2016, it would be announced that a young Brazilian by the name of Tainara Conti had been signed by WWE, where she would report to the Performance Center almost immediately. And right off the bat, it appeared that Tainara had all the potential in the world. I mean, she had combat experience from earlier in her life. She has a black belt in Judo and a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Add to that the look of a star, so you can see why WWE signed her. It appeared on the surface that the sky was the limit for Tainara Conti. But Despite all that promise, her road in WWE would unfortunately be a bumpy one. Despite having been signed in 2016 and spending years at the Performance Center, which is supposed to be a world-class training facility to get wrestlers ready for TV, or so they say, it felt like out of the four years she was there, Conti never really had the full backing of WWE, and this is when some will argue that she never showed improvement. And I'm not gonna argue whether that's true or not, but I will say, what does it say of the WWE performance? Center if Ty Conti was there for years and never really showed the improvement that they wanted out of her. But in the end, we'll never really know what went wrong there. The point is, Conti was in WWE for four years, and outside of a few sporadic appearances here and there on NXT and the Mae Young Classics, she never really became a full-time fixture in the WWE Women's Division. And so on April 20th, 2020, Tainara Conti was part of the unfortunate list of people who were released from WWE during during a worldwide pandemic. A young talent that was signed because she had all the potential in the world just gone like that in a second. And this moment right here could have easily have been the end of Tanara Conti's wrestling career if she wanted to, but she made the choice to keep on going because she loves the sport of professional wrestling. And when I say professional wrestling, I mean professional wrestling. Conti has posted multiple times on her Instagram story that she's a huge fan of Katsuyori Shibata. And that's when it hit me. Conti is a fan of of the hard-hitting Japanese strong style. So it kind of started to make sense why her and WWE didn't end up mixing so well. Conti is a fan of a certain style of wrestling that WWE just doesn't allow. So in a strange way, she would be better off wrestling the way she wanted elsewhere. But more importantly, proving that she is in fact a rising star in professional wrestling. And this is why wrestlers having options on where to work is so important. This is why in situations like this, I'm glad we have in AEW. I'm glad we finally have a big name alternative to the WWE that actually has a sizable platform that fans enjoy. So naturally, after her 90 day no compete clause was up, Tainara Conti would show up in AEW to participate in the women's tag team tournament, The Deadly Draw. Tainara, now going by the shortened Ty Conti, would be paired with the Dark Order's Anna J, where they would quickly become fan favorites and become close friends themselves. And despite not winning the tournament, Ty and Anna's on-screen chemistry became endearing. Fans wanted to see more of Team Tay J, but it was unclear whether Conti would be sticking 
sticking around in AEW or not. There was high demand from AEW fans to sign Ty Conti because the very small amount that we saw of her in AEW was the side of her that we didn't get to see in WWE. She's naturally an easy to root for babyface and I think AEW fans gravitated towards her because we knew what she had just been through. We knew that she had untapped potential. In one month of working with AEW, she showed more personality than she ever did in four years with WWE. So it was definitely an encouraging sign when we saw her stick around with AEW even when the tag team tournament was over, when we saw her sitting in the crowd. And AEW being AEW, they did this for a reason because they had a plan for her. On an August episode of Dynamite, Ty Conti would be sitting ringside when Anna Jay of the Dark Order would come out to offer her a contract to join them. And of course this made perfect sense because Anna and Tay had just become close friends during the tag team tournament. And so Ty Conti was given time by the Dark Order to decide whether she wanted to join them or not. And just like that right off the bat she was part of an intriguing storyline in AEW. And this of course would lead to a big moment for Ty Conti as it would be announced just a few days later that she had officially signed with AEW. Ty Conti was all elite and AEW fans rejoiced and they welcomed her with open arms in hopes that she would be joining the Dark Order. But it was what Ty Conti was doing off screen that earned her respect and the label of a rising star. Because after all, she didn't just join AEW to cash a check. She joined to prove that she'll one day be in the conversation for best women's wrestler in the world. And she did that by putting in the work. Conti didn't just sit around and wait for an opportunity. She earned it. She wrestled on Dark week after week and eventually her matches started getting Getting better every single time. This competitor who was once being said to have had one of the worst matches in NXT history was starting to finally show her true potential. She really leaned into using that hard hitting Japanese style in her matches and it worked so well with her fighting background that it makes you wonder how another promotion couldn't have seen that and used it to elevate her. And as the quality for Ty Conti's ring work began to grow so did the fanfare for her. She started making appearances on being the elite and Sammy G's vlog and she just seemed to fit in so well with the AEW atmosphere that the fans started to like her even more than they already did. She just had a great and lovable personality and like I said earlier it was the first time we had been able to see this side of her. And also add to that that Ty Conti did eventually decide to align herself with the Dark Order due to Anna J, though unofficially she was not an official member. But just the fact that she was associated with them to some capacity made it all the more easier to root for her since the Dark Order are loved by basically everyone. And all of this was just adding to her already likable presence, everything else was just a bonus. And as Ty Conti was improving at a rapid rate, she started getting bigger moments on Dynamite. She was able to represent Dark Order on the very emotional Brody Lee tribute episode of Dynamite. Then just a few weeks later, she challenged Serena Deeb for the NWA women's title, although in a losing effort. But once once again, Ty Conti delivered a great performance which earned her praise despite losing. Now it wasn't long after this where Ty Conti would also participate in the Women's Eliminator Tournament to try to earn a shot at the AEW Women's title at AEW Revolution. But she would be eliminated by Nyla Rose in the first round and it would be her second loss to Nyla in her short AEW career. But there was something else that happened in this tournament that affected Ty Conti. Her tag team partner and best friend Anna Jay would unfortunately be hit with a shoulder injury that would put her out of action for months. Which meant Ty was left all on her own in AEW, or at least she thought, because the Dark Order would continue to support her even though she wasn't an official member. And oddly enough, her bond with them grew even bigger, especially with Negative One, who began to accompany her to the ring and even call some of her matches on commentary. And it was at this time that Ty Conti really started to pick up momentum, in particular on the YouTube shows like Dark and Dark Elevation. She began to go on a winning streak and therefore started climbing the rankings. But it was on a late March episode of Dynamites where Conti finally got her first big breakthrough win when she defeated Nyla Rose. And this was even bigger because it 
if you recall, I said Nyla Rose had previously beaten Conti twice, so this was Conti finally getting that big win and overcoming the one challenge that she couldn't before. And it was this big win that finally allowed her to top the rankings, but in a weird twist of fate, she formed a partnership with AEW Women's Champion Hikaru Shida. Together they fended off the common enemies in Nyla Rose and Ali. And during this little feud, Ty Conti would also pick up a big singles win over Ali on Dynamite, which only added to her status as number one contender for the women's title. But Shida and Conti continued to team up until Ty Conti made it clear that one day they were going to have to fight for the women's title although she did it in a very respectful manner. So it would finally be announced that number one contender Ty Conti would face Hikaru Shida for the AEW Women's title on the April 21st episode of Dynamite. A match with a big fight feel, the biggest match of Ty Conti's career. It's a match where she's going in with the most fanfare she's ever had. The fans are firmly behind her, they believe in her now. But she has to go up against Hikaru Shida, who's been the longest reigning champion in AEW, male or female. It's the classic underdog who worked their way up to the top versus the dominant champion story. And AEW did a great job highlighting that. They made some really fantastic video packages leading up to this match. Conti in particular gave a really raw interview where she just got emotional talking about her relationship with Negative One and how it reminds her of her sister. And it was just a really down to earth and emotional interview, the type that can't be done in any other promotion, only in AEW. And then there were some really sick montages of Hikaru Shida training on the beach like Cobra Kai style and it was really dope. And so match day came and the fans in attendance were leaning towards Tai Conti. I would say it was 60-40 in her favor. And Hikaru Shida and Tai Conti end up having one of the better women's wrestling matches you'll see on American TV this year. It was stiff, it was hard hitting, but most importantly it was captivating. A year of hard work allowed Tai Conti to be labeled a credible threat against the dominant champion in Hikaru Shida. And throughout this match, there were moments where I seriously believed that Conti could have won. She took a damn beating from Shida, but she held her own and she proved that she could hang with one of the best women's wrestlers in the entire world. This was the type of match that Tai Conti needed to have. On the biggest stage, on TNT, in front of a million people, she proved that she's a damn star. And although she didn't come up victorious against Shida, she put up a damn good fight and proved that her moment will come one day. And it will happen because the fans want to see it. Ty Conti might be the most natural babyface in the AEW women's division, and AEW is all about giving the fans what they want. And the great thing is, Ty Conti put in the work to earn her spot after being told that she wasn't good enough to keep around with the other promotion. The rate that she's improved at has ensured that she's one of the fastest rising stars in American women's wrestling. And the crazy thing is, she's still very young. She has her whole career ahead of her, so it Imagine how good she'll be in just a couple of years if she's already this good. The career trajectory of Ty Conti is going to be one to watch. She bet on herself and proved to the world what she's capable of. Which is why I believe she's going to be a huge star for AEW in the coming years. Because we have an AEW, Ty Conti was able to put in the work to go from undesirable to ungoddamn deniable while also winning fans over in the process. 